Hello everyone, welcome to Probability and Statistics for Data Science. Today we're going to talk about inverse transform sampling. Inverse transform sampling is based on a really clever idea that can be extremely confusing the first time that we see it. And in fact, I was very confused by it as a, as a student, but it can be very intuitive if you actually understand the motivation behind it. And that's the goal of, of this video. Let's get to it. So we're going to explain inverse transform sampling. The point, the reason why we introduce uh, inverse transform sampling is that it's really important to be able to perform simulations when we're doing probabilistic modeling in data science. And this requires sampling from arbitrary distributions. So if I give you some kind of continuous distribution that you have fit using data or whatever, it's extremely useful to be able to generate samples from this distribution. Um, so the goal is that whatever continuous distribution you give me, I should be able to generate samples from it. So in general, the way we address this problem is by decoupling into two different steps. The first step is to have some kind of random generator that gives us uniform samples in the unit interval. Okay, samples that you know are have uniform density within the unit interval. We're not going to focus on how to do this uh, in this video or in the course. Typically, this is done either with some kind of physical device that gives you uniform samples or with a pseudo random generator based on, on number theory that um, approximates a uniform distribution in 0, 1. That's a fascinating problem in itself. We're not going to talk about it today. We're going to assume that someone is giving us samples that uni are uniformly distributed in the interval from 0 to 1. Okay, that's just an assumption. The second step is to take those samples that are uniformly distributed between 0 and 1 and transform them so that they have the distribution that we want to simulate. As a picture, like imagine that you have these uniform samples. I generated the, these guys using Python and you want to transform them so that like look like this here we want to simulate for example an exponential distribution how do you achieve that how do you transform these samples so that you're sure that they're going to have the distribution that you want so like, let's be a little bit more formal about what we want we have some arbitrary random variable a okay and we know the distribution of a in particular we know it's cdf for example and as an input, we have another uh, random variable, which is u, which is uniformly distributed between 0 and 1. What we want is to find some deterministic function h that is, of course, going to depend on a, right? Like this h will depend on the random variable that we are trying to simulate, so that h of u has the same distribution, the same probabilistic behavior as the random variable that we want to simulate. That's our goal. So let's be a little bit more precise about what we mean by having the same distribution. What we mean is that if we look at the probability that h of u, which are our simulated random variable based on, on this uniform random variable u, h of u is between any two numbers, x and y, that probability should be exactly equal to the probability that the random variable we want to simulate is between those two numbers. Because remember, when we talk about continuous random variable, variables, the way we uh, reason about them is in terms of the probability that they belong to intervals. So if this random variable, let me use another color, if this random variable um, has the same probability um, of belonging to any interval to this other random variable, then they have the same distribution. That's the, uh, that's the reasoning here. All right, so now let's think about how, how we can achieve this. Uh, in this graph, I've drawn the unit interval here. And what you need to imagine is that what we're going to obtain when we sample from the uniform distribution are samples that are going to be uniform, uniformly distributed within here. And what we want is this function here, this h function, which I'm calling a mystery function now which allows us to map these guys 
Okay, so you can see that this function maps each of the uniform samples. I'm very committed to this. I maybe I should have put less points. Okay, and uh, we want this mapping to be such that when I look at these guys where these points are hitting the vertical axis, I want that to be distributed like A, like the random variable that I want to simulate. In particular, if I consider the probability that we land here, the probability that we're between X and Y, I want that to be equal to the probability that A, the random variable A, is between X and Y. In order to achieve that, now I'm going to ask you a question. You can think about it. What should be the width of this interval? So just to be clear, this is the point that is mapping to X, and this is the point that is mapping to Y through this mystery function H. And what I'm asking you is, what, how, how wide should this interval between this guy and this guy be? So that, okay, what do we want to achieve? We want that the probability of landing here is equal to P of the probability that A is between X and Y, which is equivalent to saying that the probability that the uniform random variable landing here is exactly equal to that probability. Okay, so how wide should this interval be? so that the uniform samples fall there with this probability. I would really recommend that you pause the video and you make sure that you understand everything I've said, because otherwise, you know, nothing, nothing will make sense. And also you start thinking about, you know, you try to answer it yourself, like what, what should be the, the width of that, of that interval. All right, so now let's think about these uniform samples in the unit interval. Um, we're saying that we want the probability of being in this interval. This should be equal to P of the probability that A is between X and Y. So what's the PDF of a uniform random variable? It's just a constant. So we want the probability of that interval. It's going to be one because the density is equal to one times the width of the interval. So I want that the probability of ending up there to be equal to this, then this should be the width of the interval. It's maybe um, more intuitive to think about this in terms of a fixed number. So imagine that you want that the probability that you end up here to be 0 0.5. Then you want the probability that the uniform random variable here, the probability that the uniform random variable ends up in this interval is 0 0.5. So that interval has to be half of the unit interval okay so here we need half of the unit interval so that the probability that the uniform random variable lands there is equal to one half when we do, instead of having one half we have some arbitrary probability it still holds that the the length of the interval needs to be equal to this probability because then when we multiply times the density which is one that is the probability that the uniform random variable ends up there okay so let's go back to our picture you know here you have a prettier picture indicating that the length should be the probability that a is between x and y let's go to our original pi uh, picture we want that the mystery function ensures that this width for any x and y is always equal to the probability that a is between x and y because that's going to ensure that when we do this mapping we're going to land in those intervals with the appropriate probability for that random variable. So here you can pause the video and try to think what this mystery function should be equal to. Okay, we're after this mystery function that ensures that the width, this width is always going to be a, the probability that A is between X and Y. This is a difficult question, so don't worry too much. You know, come back if you, if you don't figure it out. Okay, so now in order to make this question a little bit easier, I'm going to flip the axis. All, all I've done here is I've taken the horizontal axis and put it as the vertical axis, and the vertical axis I put it as the horizontal axis. But otherwise everything is the same, okay? This is the mystery function, except that now we have the inverse of the mystery function if you want. So this is the mystery function, this is u, this is the unit interval that we're talking about. 
And what we were saying is that for any x and y, we need this to be the probability that um, a is between x and y. Set otherwise, if I take the value of this function here and I subtract its value here, we have the probability that the random variable is between x and y. Now the question has become a bit easier. What is this mystery function? Again, I encourage you to pause the video and think about it. So this mystery function, the inverse of this mystery function, sorry, that we're seeing right now, is the cumulative distribution function, right? It's just the cumulative distribution function of A. Because if you remember, the property of the cumulative distribution function is that if you take its value here minus its value here, it, that's exactly equal to the probability that the random variable is between x and y. So if we flip this and we use the inverse CDF here, this satisfies this property that we want that if we consider any interval, the probability that the random variable, the uniform random variable ends up here is equal to the probability of A being in that interval. So that's actually going to the, be the probability that we end up in that interval. So if we apply that this inverse CDF to uh, the uniform random variable, we are going to get a valid sample of A. I find this idea very, very beautiful. Okay, hopefully that was clear. Let's recap what we've shown. We've shown that if you want to simulate a sample from a random variable A with a certain CDF, that of course is known, okay, you need to know the CDF. If you want to simulate this using a sample from a uniform random variable U, what should you use? What should you do? We apply this algorithm where we obtain the sample and then we apply the inverse of the CDF because that is going to map the random variable in a way that the probability of ending up in any interval is the probability that A is within that interval. All right, as we saw, I mean, as I have said before, of course, this mystery function H of U has to depend on, on A, right? Because we want to simulate the distribution of A. The way it depends on it is you take the inverse of the CDF of A. All right, so I have shown you intuitively why this works. Let's try to prove that it actually works. In order to prove that it works, we're going to say that B is equal to the inverse of the CDF um, um, applied to a, random, a uniform random variable U. And now we're going to derive the CDF of B. If the CDF is the same as the CDF of A, that means that they have the same probabilistic behavior. The probability that they're in any interval is exactly the same, so we will have succeeded in simulating A. Okay, so by definition, the CDF of B at this arbitrary value Y is just the probability that B is more or equal to Y. But now what is B? B is the inverse CDF of A applied at U. Okay, so now we have to use the following. So now we have to think a little bit. We have to realize that in general, CDFs are uh, increasing, right? They, we, we already proved that they're non-decreasing. So that means that if we're interested in the probability that y is above f a inverse of a certain value u, that's exactly equivalent to saying that this is the CDF, this is going to be u and this is going to be f of y because the cdf is um, is non-decreasing we are guaranteed that this is equivalent to u being smaller or equal to f of y okay so this is completely equivalent hopefully you buy that and now you have to um like be a bit strict for a moment in the sense that like it's very easy to think look, look at this thing and think it's a P CDF and start getting confused just think of it for a moment as some constant c what is the probability that a uniform random variable because that's this is nothing else than a uniform random variable is more or equal to a constant c that is between 0 and 1 well you integrate the density of 
the uniform random variable between zero and that constant, and boom, it's just equal to the constant. But that constant happens to be the CDF of A uh, at Y, which is exactly what we wanted to show, right? We want to show that the CDF of B at Y is exactly the same as the CDF of A at Y for any value of Y. So we have proven that uh, B has the distribution that, um, that we wanted to simulate. Okay, so this kind of proves that inverse transform sampling holds. When I learned about inverse transform sampling, the way they taught us was they told us, yeah, you apply the inverse of the CDF, and then they showed us this. And I was like, I guess, yeah, I, I, I guess, I guess this is true. But I think that it's very important to think in terms of this graph and why this actually works. And the reason it works is that you're making sure that you're mapping uh, this random variable, this uniform random variable in a way that uh, the, the probability that it lands on different intervals is, is the correct one. Okay, so let's just do, a, like to finish, let's just do an application to simulating an exponential random variable with parameter lambda. This is what the CDF of the exponential looks like. We can derive the inverse very easily by just setting this equal to u. And then you say, you know, like e minus lambda a is equal to uh, one minus u. And then you take logarithms and you end up with this expression. You end up with this expression for the inverse. And that is, that's the mystery function, if you want, for the exponential uh, distribution. That's what you're going to apply to the uniform. All right. Uh, we have proven that if you, apply, if you do this, you're going to get an exponential random variable with parameter lambda. This is how the function looks like. And as usual, I want to encourage you that when you get some kind of result, you look at it and think whether it's make, it makes sense. So remember this story that we were mapping values from here to here. So now you can think a little bit like, you know, if this is uniform, given how this inverse looks like, am I going to get more samples here or more samples here? And when you look at the inverse, it's obvious that you're going to get, maybe this is becoming a little bit too cluttered, so let me erase a little bit. We're seeing the same number of samples, let's say here, the uniform as here. But these guys are mapped to a very small interval here, whereas these guys are mapped to a huge interval here. So when you look at the density on the vertical axis, indeed, it's going to be very concentrated here, and it's going to be much more spread out as we go along. So we are going to get this expression, okay, where this, this uh, shape where this part corresponds to this, far, this first part of the axis. Again, I encourage you to think about it on your own, but hopefully you see that the shape of the inverse is actually such that we get a higher density here and much less density here. And it also has this other property where you see that it's as going asymptotically towards one, but not really reaching it. And uh, you actually need that to simulate an exponential distribution because with, with arbitrary small probability, you are going to get arbitrarily high values. Okay, so with very small probability, you do need to send some of these guys to extremely large values on the uh, vertical axis. And we achieve this with this, um, with this function. So what happens when I apply the inverse to this histogram? We get uh, like a, a histogram that really looks like an exponential histogram and the fit is actually extremely good. Okay, so this works out numerically. I encourage you to try it out on, on Python. And that's it. We have learned a beautiful idea, in my opinion, that enables us to generate arbitrary continuous distributions from uniform samples. And that's all I got. Thank you very much.